let's go to the Word this morning. Amen? Hope that you're awake now. Wow, because it's going to be loud in here. Okay, can you say it? One, two, three. What does that mean? Wonder of wonders. Wonder of wonders. Wow, wow. God, you love me. I became a Christian on December the 18th, 1977. You say to me, well, Gary, how do you know you became a Christian on December 18th, 1977? I was there when it happened. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ought to be able to do that. If you say, well, I don't know when I became a Christian. Well, you could put down today and you could just double down today and nail it today. And from here on, you could say, you know what? I thought I was a Christian. Maybe I was, maybe I won't. But boy, I nailed it to the wall, the wall on December the 10th. 2017 y'all hear me or not and devil get out of my head get out of my house i'm gonna live for the lord and serve the lord and love the lord amen from this day forward wow wonder of wonders that god would love us amen let's go with the message see what we can find today making god true Making God true. Now, last week was making God big. Making God big. Mary made God big. And we saw that. I can't re-preach the message. But we're looking at different characters, different people who were right there. Key players in the Christmas story and the narrative. Of course, Mary. Forget about it. Amen? Come on. She made God big. My soul doth magnify the Lord. She made God big. Today, making God true. Making God true. We're going to look at Joseph today. All right? But don't you get bored with me. All right? Because we're going to look at things from a different angle and bring something to the Christmas story that maybe you hadn't thought before. Okay? Let's check it out. Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the what? The what? And the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Now, my question to you is, do you believe that? Did you know if you believe that, then you believe that, if you believe that scripture, then you believe anybody that comes up any other way to God other than Jesus is a thief and a robber? If you believe that scripture right there, then you believe that Islam and believing in Muhammad won't take you to heaven. You understand that? And you can fill in the blank. Buddhism, Hinduism, you name it. Good works, good looks, keeping a list. Y'all hear me or not? Being a certain church member. How do you get to God the Father? Through Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Now listen, either that's the truth or it ain't. I can't make God true for you. All right? Now, he's true for me. I believe he's the way, the truth, the life. I believe his word. Even parts I don't understand. Even parts that I don't like. I give him the benefit of the doubt. I make him true. Y'all hear me or not? But now, I can't do that for you. You have to do that for you. Your husband can't do it for you. Your wife can't do it for you. It's an individual thing. Are y'all with me so far? Mary made God big. I can't make God big for you. Oh, God, you know, where would he go? He's picking on me. I can't fix that. You're going to have to fix that. I can't do that. God's big, period. He's big, period. But he ain't big to you unless he's big to you. Does that make sense? God is true and his word is true. But his word ain't true to you unless it's true to you. Does that make any sense? Doesn't mean if you don't think it's true that it's not true, it's still true. It just ain't true to you. You're the one that's in bad shape. Not his word, not him. Got it? So let's check it out. I know it's a little confusing. But let's go with some more plain, straightforward scriptures. Romans. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Listen. Scientists or so-called scientists can come up with all kind of bull they want to. This happened millions of years ago. The planet blew up and here you are. It doesn't work in anything else. Blow up anything and when you get done, you got a mess. 
But in science, man, you blow up the universe and you've got life and, and it's beautiful. It's stupid, okay? But it can be, it can be what they believe, but, and they, they refuse to believe the scriptures. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and everything has order. And I read something today that was pretty cool. And I can't go over it again and tell you what it is, but it's amazing. Like how many, how many grains, or how many kernels are in the corn and, and how many waves hit the shore every single minute. There's so much order in our universe. It's crazy. But it all just blew up and it was all orderly after that. That ain't how it is in marriage, is it, say? Yes or no? Amen. Yes or no? Come on. So. Just because people don't believe God is true, that doesn't make faith in God of no effect. Because other people don't believe in God's truth doesn't affect my faith one iota. And it doesn't move him one inch. You understand that? Say. And then the scripture gets really strong here. God forbid. Let God be true, but every man a liar. You can't get more plain English than that. Yes or no? Say. Let's say those people don't understand the Bible. Let me try this. You don't understand the Bible. What? Let me see if you understand this. Come on with me now. Let God be true and every man a liar. How many understand that? I believe we got it, didn't we? Say. That's pretty plain English, isn't it? What does that mean? It's up to you. It's up to you. If God's going to be true to you. If you're going to believe him, it's going to be on you. It's not on him. It's not on me. Now, it's on me to preach. It's on me to try to convince you. It's on me to try to persuade you. But ultimately, the decision is yours. Amen? If you want to believe all roads lead to heaven, happy trails on your way to hell. You're not going to get to heaven, not according to the Bible that way. Amen. Playing dumb ain't going to fly. Keep looking. As it's written that you might be justified in your sayings and you might overcome when you're judged. We're all going to stand before the Lord one day individually. You're going to give an account. We've all sinned and come short of his glory. It's not going to be about our good works. It's going to be, did you believe totally in Jesus Christ? Or did you believe in some other way, some other something, whatever? It's not going to fly. Amen. So, we're talking about making God true, and we're just getting started here. That by two immutable things, Hebrews 6, in which it was impossible for God to what? We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that's set before us, which hope we have. That word hope is confidence, by the way. You could translate that word confidence, 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 confidence. Which confidence we have as a what? See, we have a confident anchor. Jesus, sure and steadfast, which entered into that within the veil. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He shed his blood. It was received and accepted by God our Father. And we're saved by putting our faith in him. And God does not lie, cannot lie. That is the truth. It will always be the truth. You hear me? But what if so-and-so says what? I could care less. Makes no difference. His word is true. Amen. Say. Bottom line. How about you, though? Here's a crazy scripture, man. It just, it just pulls a rug out from under you if you think, well, whatever. Without faith, it's impossible to do what? Please God. For he that comes to God must do what? Well, I believe he sort of is. No, you need to believe he is. Amen? Say, he is the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot come to, no, to, to the Lord ex except through Jesus. That's it. He is. And that he will reward those that diligently seek him. Amen? We're talking about making God true today. Now, this is a strong message, but that's good. We want a strong message, right? Who likes wishy-washy? Who likes for 20-something years, Congress says Jerusalem is the capital of Israel? But they sit there and do nothing about it. And now President Trump's in all kind of trouble because he says Jerusalem's the capital of Israel. Guess what? It's what the Bible says. I mean, I'm just saying, do we like wishy-washy or not? Say. Yes or no? You like wishy-washy? Okay. 
I mean, presidents got all kinds of problems and warts and wrinkles, and so do you and me. But the fact of the matter is, we see people get together, make decisions that are useless. They're so flip-floppy, flim-flam. Yes or no? You're not going to fly like that in the Christian life. You know what Jesus says? I, listen, Jesus said, I can't stand lukewarm in the book of Revelation. I'll spew you out of my mouth. I would that you were hot or cold. And hot's not bad and cold's not bad. What's bad is that middle part where you're neither hot nor cold. You're neither solid for Jesus or, or really anti-Jesus. You're just cool. You're going to be hot one day. You listening to me or not? Come on. Making God true. God is not a man that he should lie. You don't believe the Bible, do you? Well, of course I do. He's not a man that he's going to lie to me. Do you have that kind of belief and faith? That he should repent. Hath he said and he shall not do it? Say, let there be light. And guess what it was? The lights went on. Yes or no? This is God. Hath he not spoken and shall he not make it good? Say, absent from the body, present with the Lord. I believe it. But scriptures like all things work together for good to them who love God. To them are the called according to his purpose. When you find yourself in a ditch and not knowing how I'm going to get out, how I'm going to make it. Listen. Faith in God, believing is true. You're going to believe. I'm going to get out of that ditch. God's going to help me. Amen. Are you hearing me today? This making God true stuff is really big. It's really big stuff. So here's the question. Is God true to you? I know I'm putting you to sleep with all this true stuff, ain't I? Listen, is God true to you? Is he true to you? I'm not saying has he been good to you. I'm asking you, is he true to you? When you think of God, God is truth. He cannot lie. His word is true. He is good. He's true to me. There is no darkness in him. It's light. It's right. He is holy, holy, holy. Is he true to you? Well, he was to Joseph. And you ain't had it near as hard as Joseph. He was true to Joseph. And Joseph's come, he's going to be here with us on the screen today. He's going to say, make God true. You can trust him. But it's up to you. You got to put feet to your faith. You hear me? Let's learn, let's learn from him. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused, engaged. It's a little bit different engagement though. When you engaged over there. It's actually the families have worked all this out. There's been money exchange. This could have been happening for a long time. It's like you married already. You're pretty much married already. So Mary is already a spouse to Joseph. This is a legal binding deal. So, the birth of Jesus was on this wise when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph before they came together, plain English, before they had sexual relations. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Problem. We got a problem. Some, somebody's going to have to be believing something soon. Because we got a problem. So Mary was a spouse to Joseph. Keep looking. They had no sexual relations, period. Just in case you didn't hear me earlier. Mary was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Was Joseph the daddy to Jesus? No. I got a question though for you. John the Baptist was a miraculous birth. His mother was Elizabeth. His father was Zacharias. Was Zacharias the father of John the Baptist? Yes. They were both old. It was a miracle of their birth that they were able to conceive and all that kind of stuff. Yes. But this was different. Mary became with child of God the Holy Spirit. 
You don't believe that, do you, Gary? Well, see, that's where the rubber hits the road right there, didn't it? See, you were all happy about Christmas and everything till I said that, right? See, that's what I'm talking about. Either it's true or it's not. You understand? And, and others will say, that's not true. Well, it's not true to them. It's true to me. And it's true to him because he don't lie. Do you see how that works? How we just did the math on that. Well, this math will work in your whole life. This is the beauty of the Christmas story. It can help change our world. So, she was found with child. Mary was probably about three months pregnant. Just throwing that out. I've read other stuff. Who knows? Okay. Probably. That's why the word probably is there. About three months pregnant when Joseph found out. Based on the timeline and what we see. And you can figure that out from Elizabeth having John the Baptist six months when Mary goes to see Elizabeth. So the time math is pretty close. Got it? Yes or no? I'm going to argue about that. Now, Joseph was all man here. He was all man. If you are got a, a girl that you love, that you care about, it's an arranged situation. It's the way it is. It's the culture. And back in that day, if you committed adultery, you were killed that day. You understand that or not? You were killed that day. You didn't go get your house and live somewhere else. You're dead that day. This would be considered adultery that day. Do you understand or not? That day. So, so Joseph was all man. Don't make Joseph more than Joseph is. Make God all he is. Let's don't worship Joseph here. But Joseph is an example to us of how true God is and how you can trust God. Y'all hear me on that? So, Joseph, her husband, being a just man, a good man, a kind man, he was not willing to make a public example. It would have been no problem. I'm married. I'm getting my spouse to her. We're going to be married. It's been in the works for years. We've exchanged money. She's pregnant. And he drags her out in front of everybody. And she's killed. He was a good man. He didn't want that. He wanted to somehow put her away privately. Make it go away. Got to give him some credit for that. That was his mindset. He was a man. What kind of man was Joseph? He was a just man. What does that mean? He was a fair man. He was a fair man. He was a kind man. He didn't want to make a public example out of her. He was a thinking man. He was thoughtful. He tried to think it through thoughtful how can i make how can we make this work out he was a hurting man we'll have to do it privately there's nothing like pain when it's had to be kept private inside i want to share it but i can't without going into great detail i know what it is to live with private pain and you try to fix it and you try to make it work you try to cover her, then it just blows up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think a lot of you would know what I'm talking about. Things that you have to deal with. You keep it inside. This is Joseph. He's just like us. Say he's just like us. Don't make Joseph up here, please. Otherwise, you're going to have a hurdle getting to the making God true for you. If we can put people up here, that gives us, we get, we get to get off the hook. See, I can get off the hook now because he's, he's more spiritual than I am. He was just a man. But while he thought on these things, he was a thoughtful man, a thinking man. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, a dream. Saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not, because he's full of fear. In a dream, this happened in a dream. Different than Zacharias over in Luke 1. The angel appeared right there, the temple. This is a dream. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto you Mary, which is your wife. That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. You ever had a dream that was crazy? I had a dream last night. 
I dream all the time. You know that, don't you? I'm a crazy-minded person. I'm dreaming last night. Mitch and Elise, I'm sure, I don't know if there's anybody else in the car, but I'm coming over some huge mountains. Huge! I don't even know where I'm at hardly. I'm in a car or Jeep or something. And I'm just coming over these huge mountains and just all of a sudden I'm off the cliff. Thousands of feet down. Just flying through the air in a Jeep. Just falling. And there's water below. And I just had to pick the right time to get out of that Jeep. And exit the vehicle. And I did. And I lived. And then later I see Mitch and Lisa. She's a little shaken up. And then I see Mitch and he's like. <laughs> but we all lived. So I woke up happy this morning. Okay. <laughs> you ever have crazy dreams? Yes or no? Say. You ever have crazy dreams? If you don't dream, I feel sorry for you. Because this is an adventure every night for me. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. I went off a cliff last night. <laughs> But no, so I've given messages on dreams before. Sometimes dreams, I really think the Lord's helping you and speaking to you. Sometimes I have no idea what they are. But whatever you do, don't base your life on a dream. Base it on the truth. Do you hear me? Yes or no? Well, this was a dream he had. I said that to say this to you. He had this dream, but Joseph had to believe it. I think it's a little different than the angel showing up like Zacharias did, but that's my opinion. So he says, this thing that's conceived, this one is of the Holy Spirit, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name what? Jesus. Means God saves. That's what the name Jesus means, God saves. And there you get the definition of his name right there. For he shall what? Save his people from their sins. That's the definition of the name of Jesus, God saves. So he has this dream. The angel Gabriel appeared to Joseph in this dream. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The child she carries is conceived of the Holy Spirit. She shall bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. Boom, sounds pretty simple, right? Okay. Here's the problem, though. He's all man, and he's got to believe it. And you're all man, and you're all woman. And you've got your life history, you've got your struggles you've gone through, you've got your own personality. It's going to come down to you. Are you going to believe God's Word or not? Is He going to be true to you or not? Say, Joseph had a decision. What's going to happen here? Well, I had a dream, so it's all good now. I don't think that's how life is. I think he struggled with that. God said it would happen this way. 700 years earlier, God said it would happen just like this is happening in the Scripture. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall conceive 700 years earlier. Shall be with child, shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which by interpretation is, said again, God with us. So God is true. He said it would happen. But Joseph has to believe it. He's got a problem here. He's got to make God true. And Joseph made God true. Joseph made God true. That's what he did. Joseph being raised from sleep. Say it with me. Did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him. Did he put away his wife? Did he, did he take her out publicly? No. He took her to be his wife. He did what God said do. Y'all hear me or not? Not a deep message, but it is really important. This is a big deal. And he knew her not. What does that mean? Did not have sexual relations with her. Now, I know God told him not to, so he didn't. But you just forgot something. He's all man. Guys, that's tough. You hear me or not say, don't short sell this, man. This is God saying something and it's hard to do. And you know what? He did it. Because God's not one that's going to lie to me. And he, he made God true. 
So he didn't have sexual relations with her until she had brought forth her, her firstborn son. And he called, did he call him Joseph? Say, little Joseph. No, he called him what? Why? Because Joseph made God true. Are we getting it across this morning? I know it's elementary. I'm beating it down. I'm beating it pretty hard. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea. There was a lot that Joseph had to do. Listen, if God hadn't have been hit true to Joseph and he hadn't have made God true to him, this wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have got done. Now, I know, well, God could make all things happen. I know that. But he uses people. This building wouldn't, got, wouldn't have been built out here if we didn't together believe God. Y'all understand that, yes or no? Well, no, it would have just happened. Well, it ain't ever happened. It takes people believing God to get God's work done. Does that make sense? But we must believe Him. We must believe Him. Joseph believed God. He went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth. This is a long way. I've been there by bus and it's a journey. He went into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, which is right next door to Jerusalem, right next door to Jerusalem. Because he was in the house and lineage of David, that's where they had to go to be taxed. This taxing was made, you know, he, to be taxed with Mary's spouse, wife, being great with child. So here she is. She's full term partner. And they're traveling through these mountains, crazy desert area. Why? Because Joseph made God what? No, we're going, honey. What? No, we're going. And you're coming with me. And we're going to make the journey. Joseph was, he was quite the believer, wasn't he? Say, I like this guy. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. I mean, are you kidding me? You mean God, manger? We're not staying here. You ever been to a hotel and you said, we're not staying here. Let me see your hand. We're not staying here. I made a mistake this past year and didn't do that. I went to a red roof inn and got eat up with bed bugs in case you didn't hear the story. Oh my gosh, it was horrible. I never really believed in bed bugs. <laughs> Until they get on you, you'll believe her then. That's just a sideline. I'm just saying. Can you see him? An, a manger? A nasty cow stall? But Joseph did it because he believed God. Yeah, but the hotel ain't good. This can't be right. Well, no, it is right because God said it. And we're going to stay steady, honey. Amen? Or he's arguing with his own head. You ever do that? Yep, I do. You better have something that you come back to, and it should be the truth of God's Word. Because you and I are crazy people. So Joseph made God true. Say that with me. Joseph made God true. He did what God said do. Say that little, little rhyme with me. Joseph made God true. He did what God said do. How can you know if God's true to you, then do what He says do? Amen. How do I know God is true to me? I do what God says do. And when I don't do it and I screw it up, I'm wrong. He's not. Y'all catching the math this morning? Pretty important. Joseph took Mary to be his wife. Joseph had no sexual relations with Mary. He's doing what God told him to do. Joseph called the child Jesus. He's doing what God said do. Making God true. That's our message today. Joseph made God true. He did what God said do. And you'll know the truth. And the truth will set you free. My mother was a drunk for years. She was a hard worker. But after work, she would get wasted. Beer by beer by beer by beer. And then she would be drunk at bedtime. That was life at the Clark House. Billy Graham's on the TV three weeks before December the 18th, 1977. The word of God spoke to my mother. She's drunk. Yeah. 
She didn't know much about the Bible or Jesus or anything. Somehow, something that was said, she believed. I came in from partying. She said, we're going to church in the morning. I cussed her out. She believed it enough to get up the next morning and walk to church. To a church we'd never been to. We don't know what work, didn't know where church is. What are we doing? Dumbest thing ever. And I'm talking just like this, but using it expletives. And we walked. Three weeks later, my mother was saved. My mother, yeah, praise the Lord. Come on. She was saved. You can call it foolish or impossible. Amen. But us who've experienced it, it's a miracle. She never drank another drop. And her hell-raising son got saved and became a preacher. That is crazy. It's amazing. Don't put, don't put yourself, don't, don't put other people up as having more faith than you to give you an excuse. If my drunk mama can have faith, all of you are without excuse. Amen? Just be man or woman enough to just say it. God, you're not true. Quit hiding under cover. Come on. Jump in. Amen? Jump in, baby. Make him true like Joseph did. I love this. This is beautiful. And we got saved at Christmas time. So no wonder this really means a lot to me. Amen. Joseph was all man. Joseph was a just man. He was a kind man. We saw it. He was a thinking man. He was a hurting man. But Joseph was something else. He was an obedient man. That's the difference. That's a big deal when it comes to this battle of making God true or not. That's why it's a personal thing. I can't do it for you. You can't do it for me. I can't be obedient for you and you obedient for me. Only you can be obedient for you. And that is the test. If God's really true or not to you. Does that make sense? Church has gone nuts, though. I don't know if we're still there, but we certainly were there for a good long while. And I think we're sort of still there. But we think keeping a list or something will get you to, to heaven or make you a great person. That's not obedience. Keeping a checklist. Guys, come on. We're all different. The word is the word, though. But it's not about a list. We're not all cut out of the same mold. God works with you. God works with me. Amen. But the, the cookie, the cookies are on the bottom shelf though, baby. And that is you, you must believe that he is. Amen. You must have faith in him. Joseph took responsibility. That's what he did. Joseph did what was right. If God's true to you, be obedient. If God's true to you, then take responsibility. Take responsibility for your life and for your actions. How about that? Say and then how about this? Do the right thing. This is how you see if God is really true to me or not. Have I lost you or not with this crazy Christmas story? Joseph made God true. And you know what he did? He made every man a liar. Now see, you and me, we don't have it like Joseph. We ain't walking around with a pregnant wife. And telling everybody, it's, it's, it's the Holy Ghost's child. I bet you Joseph heard every name in the book. From cousins that slept with Mary to the mailman. Excuse me. He heard everything. But I believe he looked at every one of them and said, God's going to be true to me and you're going to be a liar. Do you feel it? Yes or no? This guy had it rough. <laughs> he had it rough, man. Let's don't forget Joseph at Christmas, okay? Let's remember Joseph. So making God true. Roger, how am I doing? Good or bad? Thank you. Grief. God is true whether you make him true or not. 
He's true whether you make him true or not. But God will never be true to you until you make him true to you. Say it with me. Personally. I say it every once in a while here at Fellowship. It's okay to be selfish when it comes to worshiping here, when it comes to receiving God's word here. Too many people worry about what so-and-so thinks or they worry, oh, that's good for them. How about you just worry about you? And that's, okay. that's a good thing. If there's ever a time for selfishness, it's a good time when the word of God's being preached. And we say, Lord, I'm not worried about the one to the left, the one to the right. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I'm the one that needs help right here today. You must make God true to you how? Personally. My mama had to say, we're going to church in the morning. And then my mama had to get her tail out of bed. And my mama had to walk. And then my mama had to go back the next week. She drank like crazy after church. And then the next week, drank like crazy. But that third week, I remember the message, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open the door, I'll come in to him and sup with him and he with me. Revelation 3.20. And mama came out. And I was sitting there and I went with her because you're not leaving me. I don't even know these people. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I came down front with her. Mama was saved. Some fellow named Ralph Reeder talks to me. And best I knew how I trusted Christ. But honestly, I think it took me probably six months before it really got sunk in with me better. But boy, Mama got it that day. You hear me? She made God true to her. The hour comes and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship Him. God's not real thrilled with places being full and they're not worshiping him. It's a meeting. He's not big on meetings. He's looking for true worshipers. Are you a true worshiper? Do you believe God? God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him how? In what? Spirit and what? That's why I have a problem with a lot of the charismatic church. Because they're getting all spirit, 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 spirit. Where's the truth? Don't make stuff up. I'm all for spirit. But man, God, man, make sure what you're saying is true. Amen or oh me. If you just believe it, it'll happen. Come on, man. Y'all hear me? That's hard, ain't it? This is what God wants. He wants us to worship him in spirit. But he wants us to worship him how? In what? Obedience to God is worship. Keep looking. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Truth, 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 truth. Is God true to you? Whoo! Roger, you're killing me. You make these messages so long. <laughs> and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and we declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie. And we do not the truth, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light. Here's a beautiful word. We have what? Fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from what? Roger, we're done with that verse. Let's praise the Lord. That's a great word. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. Make God true. Amen. Did you get the message today? I thought it was cookies. I got it. I'm up here going, I get this. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the bullseye of Rotunda, West Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West.
Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m., with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.